hello everyone. Um, <clears throat> my name is Ryan Dimas Desario. Um, in this chapter, I'm going to discuss about the image alignment and stitching. So, the uh, the image alignment and stitching actually right now is very commonly applied in many applications. And even in our smartphone, we already have this uh, application for for estimating the, I mean, for combining multiple images. Like, we can do like, uh, 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 capturing panorama on the uh, on our smartphone, and in the uh, and when we are capturing the panorama picture, it means we are capturing several uh, images uh, on the different angle, and we trying to connect these images to make the image having a, like a better representation. So, okay, uh, before starting to the first part, uh, this is. Uh, some of the image that uh, showing example of the uh, image stitching for the for the A image uh, <coughs> this is the geometric alignment of the images so geometric. Uh, okay geometric A, yeah, geometric so geometric alignment of the images for the stitching uh, in this case uh, we're trying to geometrically align uh, two different image so we can get a, a, a new perspective from the image and the the view this is the spherical panorama that constructed from the 54 photographs so mostly photographers do like a, a, a spherical panorama because they want to still capture a good detail but they want to like capturing like a white 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 of image so one of the one of the uh, better solution is by uh, capturing multiple image on the portrait mode and then they they combining in the they combining these images and the third one this is um, the multi-image panorama that this is assembled from an order an, an, an order photo collection so this is from the unordered photo collection and then they combine it to get more interesting image uh, that showing uh, people people playing ski and from different angle position of the image so uh, this chapter will be mostly uh, discussed about how we can get a good uh, a good image after we are doing like a stitching so we will uh, talk about uh, several method how to how to be able to uh, more optimally more optimally uh, estimate the image so the outlines uh, uh, for this uh, actually uh, this chapter following the new version from the from the uh, book that in this chapter they are uh, putting the fairways alignment together with image teaching so in this case uh, for the for this chapter eight, we will first talk about the pairways alignment because this is really important. If before we are uh, stitching the image, we need to able to uh, align the image uh, well. And then the second one, we will talk about the image stitching, uh, several strategy for the image stitching. The third one will be the global alignment, and finally we will talk about the compositing because. Although we are able to align well and then stitching well, if we are not able to compose into the good picture, then it will not, I mean, it will not creating a good photo. So we need also learn about the compositing. <clears throat> okay, I will start with the pairwise alignment. Um, in the pairwise alignment, actually, there's like a, a feature-based alignment. So in the feature-based alignment, there is a problem of estimating a motion between two or more set of match 2d or 3d points so mostly we have uh, some uh, problem how to uh, estimate a motion between two or more sets match to 2d or 3d point so we will learn how to um, uh, how to uh, uh, more uh, better to to estimating this problem and for uh, for this book, they they will be restrict 
three just like a global parametric transformation the uh, such as higher order transformation for the curve surfaces so yeah we will we will more focus in this part for estimating the motion between two or more set of match 3d points or 3d points um, <coughs> so uh, when we are doing the pairwise alignment there are many transformation that we can use uh, for example translation so this is the in the table 8.1 here we uh, it's uh, it elaborates several transformation that we can use and then the the then and also some of a how we some of a calculation how we compute like a Jacobian so based on this trans trans transformation this is that will be used to estimate the the predicted uh, a new position here so we are going to use either any transformation here and then after that we are going to uh, do some fine-tune to get a better 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 parameter and for the first pairwise alignment technique we are going to talk about the 2d alignment using the least squares so in this case uh, given a set of a match feature point the, so in this case we suppose have a match feature points xi and then x prime i and we can uh, and a planar parametric transformation of the form uh, can be estimating this by this equation and we can use any transformation in the in the from the previous slide to get the planar parametric transformation so the usual way to estimate the motion parameter P uh, is to use the least square. So we trying to 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 minimize the sum square error and then get the motion parameter P here. So the easiest way is by using the least square. And how to minimize the uh, uh, least square least square error here? For for minimize the least square error here, it can be defined as as equation in the as equation eight point two here. This is 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 using like a residual uh, information here where the residual is uh, uh, estimating based on this uh, formula from based on the current 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 position with the predicted uh, predicted predicted position so we are going to try minimizing this uh, this condition so we may able to get the optimum parameter of p so this is what we are doing in the least squares all right yeah. we have a paper which is was uh, recently accepted uh, which conference is it uh, is it so oh yeah you you right yeah. yeah and what's the title of that uh, uh, paper speech enhancement with zero shot learning what good uh, yeah it? so later after you are done with this then i can present that paper as you research yeah uh, okay mm -hmm. yeah <coughs> Where and when suppose uh, is it virtual or they do have the uh, 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 real uh, uh, conference? I think if we are in Dublin, Ireland, oh, yeah, they, Ireland. they okay, have okay. the physical, but for us, then it will be virtual. Yeah, I think we can really go because uh, today we have seven indigenous uh, cases uh, yeah. which uh, has uh, one cluster infection in uh, Ila and, oh. and uh, uh, some of the source is uh, still unknown so I think Taiwan also uh, is coming into a, a tight uh, time now yeah okay yeah, yeah. Okay. Um. Uh, okay so I will continue on um. If we are using some of a motion model from the uh, from the table 8.1, such as translation, similarity, and then affine. Affine. Uh, okay, affine. Affine. <clears throat> we can uh, we can have like a linear relation between the amount of motion. So if we have this some linear relation between the amount of motion, we can estimate the delta x here during the during the calculation, where the delta x is like a x prime minus x and then uh we can cal calculate the uh re calculate calculate the yeah, calculate. the amount of motion between the delta x with the unknown parameter p so we are trying to uh, 
uh, using this linear relation to 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 finally update uh, the p parameter. So this is uh, this is defined as the uh, equation 8.4 that delta x is is equal to x uh, prime minus x is equal to g of x p. So where g is a Jacobian of transformation with a transformation f with respect to the motion parameter p. So because of we already know uh, how to compute g and then that we already know that this is a have a linear relation. So we can uh, simply uh, estimating the linear regression for the linear least square problem using the uh, equation 8.5 which is using the g of g of sip uh, minus the minus with the delta xi which is based on the amount of motion so uh, then we can derive to get this uh, uh, equation as this defined in the 8.6 and and then we can simply uh, derive again from this equation to get the p transpose a p minus 2 p transpose p plus c and from this equation we we know that um, we can use like the symmetric positive definite or SPD system that assuming that uh, the AP from the equation 8.7 is equal to the to P so so then we can based on this uh, formulation we can simply put put it into the equation where the A is equal to sum of uh, G transpose G, G transpose of XI and G of XI and this is called Hazian while B also uh, while B can be estimating based on this condition so we can just simply using this um, uh, equation while estimating the linear least least uh, least squares yeah so I'm playing the video yes yeah joke is more important than X
I was singing Frozen with heat on my hair and went over the parts that were already bleached. My hair was coming out of my head. But, you know, this isn't the first time I've had a hair mistake. I shaved my head about a year and a half ago. Um, yeah, it, I don't even know. I mean... So from the previous uh, previous uh, method, uh, actually we are assuming that uh, it has a match uh, match condition. So uh, what if if the feature point are are, are not match? So uh, how how to uh, how to estimating uh, the how to uh, how to minimize the wicked least square problem if we are having the condition that the feature point are met are not matched. So in this case, um, <coughs> we can have a uh, this is uh, so we can have a scalar variant estimate of a sigma r square uh, with each correspondent. So uh, by by uh, by by uh, using uh, an additional parameter uh, of a sigma here, we we can try, we can use this uh, uh, scalar variance to use uh, to to finally updating to finally estimating the weighted least curve problem here. So uh, we can get the formulation based on this uh, equation that we are having an additional. Uh, Sigma i uh, uh, minus two, and uh, using the residual information still, and this is how we we estimate the weighted least square problem uh, under the condition that the feature point are not matched. <coughs> and also, uh, when the when and also we we can also uh, uh, using more. Uh, Technique by using the uh, covariance information uh, to be up to to also dealing with the uh, non-match uh, non-match feature points. So if we are using the uh, covariance information, so we first weight in each square residual by its covariance. So we need to first uh, weight in weighting uh, based on this equation. So this is called the information matrix. So by um, substituting substituting this uh, this uh, covariance information, so the equation based on the covariance weighted least square can be estimated as a follow. So when we are having non-match condition, we uh, it can be solved by uh, additionally uh, put uh, additional parameters so that uh, uh, it's still allowing us to, to estimate the to estimate the 
to estimate the the the, the result. So this is uh, the equation. <coughs> Um, the next one, um, uh, for the part of 8.1.2, we will talk about the application, which is panography. Um, in a panography, image are translated and optionally rotated and scaled before being blended with a simple averaging. So, uh, this image is uh, showing about the panograph a simple panography consisting of uh, three images so this is consisting of a three images that um, automatically align with translation model and then average together so uh, for the panography they 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 simply like uh, blended several image and then every average it so they can get the the, the panorama image here <coughs> so this is the uh, the way uh, to estimating the uh, the the using the panography. Uh, consider a simple translation model. So we want all the correspond corresponding feature in the different images to line up as best as possible. So uh, uh, in the panography, they want to minimize least square by uh, Having the uh, having the PJ uh, this teacher and this So let the TJ be the location of GTH image coordinate frame. Uh -huh. I think you you in uh, Indonesia you always read this as G. This is not. Oh, G. oh yeah, it's J, 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 J. Mm -hmm. Um, let TJ be the location of GTH image coordinate frame in the global composite frame, and then you can read it as J's. Chase. Just like fourth, oh, okay. all the fifths, chase. Okay. Yeah. Uh, chase. Mm -hmm. Yes, chase. Yeah. Let the TJ be the location of the of the chase image coordinate frame in the global composite frame, and XIJ be the uh, XIJ be the location of uh, each ice ice yeah, match. Ice. Mm -hmm. Feature in the chase image. So, yes, that's mm -hmm. so in order to align the image, we wish to minimize the least square error by by using the the this equation, the error of a panography least square. So, the panography least square uh, can be estimated based on the uh, the T J plus xij minus the xi so this is how we are minimizing the this core problem of the panography <coughs> okay so this is the th the third one that um, in the previous two uh, previous two uh, section actually uh, Usually, when we are using uh, linear least squares, is one of the simplest method for estimating the parameter. But in the computer vision, uh, most of problem do not have a simple relation between the measure and 
and the unknown. So if we are having such a condition that uh, it's more challenging and uh, having having some difference between the measurement and the unknown, usually we need uh, we need we need to solve it by uh, using the non nonlinear least squares or non nonlinear regression. So. Mostly, we are needed some like a iterative process, so the updating parameter of p can be more optimally achieved. <coughs> so, uh, this is the example that consider, for example, the a problem of estimating a rigid Euclidean 3D transformation translation pro plus rotation between two set of points. Uh, so when you read, uh, this is wrong. So you should have to read two sets okay. of points. Yeah, two sets okay. of points. Yeah. Um, okay. So translation. Uh, so if we so the consider for example the problem of estimating a rigid Euclidean to the two D transformation uh, translation plus rotation between two sets of points. And if we parameter if we parameterize this transformation by the translation amount and the rotation ang angle the rotation angle of theta as as in table uh, as in uh, previous table the Jacobian of this tra transformation depend on the current value of theta. So uh, and by reparameterization the motion matrices. So they are always uh, the identity as the origin p uh, equal to zero. So this is makes it easier to initialize the motion of a parameters. I
Oh, 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 oh. oh my god. So, in the iterative algorithm for minimize the nonlinear least square problem, so uh, we try iteratively find an update of a del delta p to the current parameter estimating to, to the current parameter estimate p by minimizing uh, uh, this condition. So, in this case, um, <coughs> uh, to minimize the uh, nonlinear least squares. For we are trying to uh, find an optimal update of a delta p that it can be uh, obtained by the sum of uh, fx i p plus delta p here minus the x prime i and this condition is equal to the g of x i p j oh, sorry j, j, j x i p uh, of delta p minus the residual so we from this equation we can derive so we can get the, the this uh, formulation the, the delta p transpose and this uh, sum sum of a uh, j transpose g and then the delta j, j, j. J, j j transpose j and delta p minus the two uh, delta p transpose sum of a j transpose uh, ri plus the sum of uh, norm norm ri <coughs> square so based on this equation from the 8.15 uh, we can simplify into the equation 8.16 as as follows so we get like a delta p t equal to a and a delta b minus the minus 2 delta p transpose b plus c and where the a is like a Hayesian is the same as equation as the equation 8.9 the, the 8.9 yeah, yeah the same the same as here so so that uh, and the, for the right hand side for the factor b we can obtain the b by by using this equation that the b is uh, some some of the j transpose x i and then r i <coughs> and then once uh, a and b have been computed we solve for using delta p so we can solve for using delta p using this condition uh, that uh, a plus uh, lambda diagonal a uh, delta p equal to the to the p <clears throat> and for this is one of a note that for the other 2d for the other 2d motion model the derivation in the table 8 8.1 are fairly straightforward except for the projective of 2d motion or homography which arise in image stitching application it's the same which arise Arising, Arising. Mm -hmm. in uh, image stitching applications. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, in this case, uh, based on the uh, formulation, uh, we're trying to uh, rewrite the equation from the the, the, the transformation in the new parametric form as a as follow so this is just uh, 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 rewrite the equation so after, after we rewrite the equation uh, here the Jacobian is therefore can be estimated as the uh, as the 8.20 equation 8.20 here and um, the for estimating the Jacobian we can take a look at the table 8.1 they already um, they already uh, giving an example and in this case uh, we are we also having like a parameter of d where the d equal to uh, multiplication of uh, its 
20 x plus h 21 y plus 1 so this is the turn of denominator uh, in a in equation 8.19 that it depends on the current parameter settings as to x, x prime and then y prime and <coughs> And the initial case the, for the eight unknowns for the this uh, h parameter can be obtained by multiplying both sides of the equation in uh, in the equation 8.19 through the denominator. So we multiplying the equation in 8.8.19 through the denominator, then we can yield the. Actually, this is uh, pronounced as denominator. Denominator. Yeah, the way you pronounce it is, is a denominator, like this. Denominator, but it's denominator. Okay. Yeah, denominator. Uh, okay. Denominator. Denominator. Yeah, denominator. Um, okay. So uh, we to get the equation. Uh, so to get the linear set of equation, it's by the multiplying both sides of the equation in the eight point nineteen through the denominator yes um, so this is yield this uh, equation in the 8.21 and then one way to compensate for this is this equation is to reweight its equation by the inverse of the current estimate of the de denominator d so we can use the uh, the inverse of the estimate of the denominator de denominator d from the equation 8.21 so we can uh, this we can obtain this uh, equation as defined in the equation 8.22 <coughs> and so the most principal way to do the estimation however is to directly minimize the square residual equation uh, in the uh, equation 8.13 so this one so, using the Gauss-Newton approximation that is performing a first-order Taylor series expansion in a P. So, this is shown in the equation 8.14, which yields set of equation. So, then uh, we, based on this uh, principle, uh, we may obtain the, 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 the condition as uh, described in the equation 8.23. <clears throat> okay so for the next one we will uh talking about the you can just uh, play the video and then uh, we will uh, stop on the today enter the Red Bull Soapbox race with a dream. A dream of launching powerfully from the start ramp. Very mighty impressive. Speeding effortlessly to the chequered flag. This is going to be a good time. And proudly collecting the winner's trophy to the adulation of a huge crowd. But for some, actually quite a few, that dream comes to an abrupt and sometimes spectacular end. Oh my oh. god! <laughs> As a tribute to those brave teams whose obstacle avoidance was obviously disengaged, this is the greatest Red Bull Soapbox race crashes. We start the countdown in Elysian Park, downtown Los Angeles, with a team built for speed. Fast food, low friction from Long Beach. Aaron the driver, Sean is riding on the back. They are intending to go very quick. There's the performance score of 28. And they've got lots of protection on there as well, haven't they? Look at those helmets. So one wheel in the front, two at the back, the tricycle. And uh, Sean hanging on at the back and trying to get his weight into the corners to help the soapbox get around them. Straight on through the chicane. 
There's the onboard shot. There's the uh, the condiments if you need them. Oh, oh my God! Wow, look at that! There was no way they could save that. Watch this around here. It's going so fast that then the back end skids out. Whoa. I think that left wheel might well have been coming off. It did at the end anyway. And there was no way the two guys could stay on there. Aaron and Sean. Here's the onboard shot. Oh, look at that. After that uh, blistering stuff, we head from the glamour of LA to the world's largest metropolis for number six in our countdown. Yomiuri Land Amusement Park in Tokyo, the iconic location of this crowd favourite from 2019. Dog trackers, Toshiro and Pashiro Kai. Creativity score of 36, father and son team. The soapbox theme is after dogs and dog catchers because dogs never give up and neither will the team. And 39 for the performance. The son's doing the steering and dad's controlling the brakes. How you know when to do which, I don't know. Off we go. Looks sturdy enough, looks well designed, apart from the fact that two people have got to do different things. And it's shaking at the moment. Look at the wobble. Look at the wobble. <laughs> Surely they can't get this to the bottom. It's wobbling all over the place. Samurai game. Seesaw coming up. Here's the seesaw. Up and down, no problem. They're all right. Pick a kicker. Pick the second kicker through the leaves. Here's the firm. They can see the finish. They know they're nearly there. Oh, oh, they're no. there. Look, they've done that. The dad's come out the back end. The son had gone onto the neck. Wow. Into the tyres. Oh, they can laugh. It's all right laughing up there. Oh, oh, look at that. Keep going, keep going. No messing about. Let's get to this finish line, they're saying. Well, they say dogs never give up. Dogs can't take firms very well either. 102.23, that really doesn't matter. What about that? Look at this. You can't go straight on over the bird. Look at that. Watch that. Watch that. Here he comes. He's hanging on. Oh, there we go. Oh, my word. Well, that's one way to find a parking space. Next up, at number five in our rundown of motorless mayhem, this epic run from Turin in 2014. So let's see whether the uh, the next Sunbox crew can keep their heads or keep their head or whichever you're looking at. This one is, uh, I'm not going to try that, it's called the Pump the Field, this one. Uh, basically we have two pumps, a Bishop and a Swiss Guard. It sounds like a cheesy gag, doesn't it, from the 70s, but it's not. It's the Sunbox that we have before us, and we have Pope Francis, a Pope Benedict, an Argentinian Pope and a German Pope, which was of course the World Cup final in the summer as well. That's not the best push-up, is it? Don't lose your feet at that point. Down goes the Pumper Bill, which looks a cross between a milk float and a golf cart and a piece of delivery wagon. But around the firm they go, and he's still waving away at the back. I'm not too sure many folks have travelled down in this kind of style or at this kind of speed. Through the chicane, no problem there. The 250 metre mark, it's so far so good for the Pumper Bill. Through the last chicane, over the ramp. <laughs> the Pope's have nose dived over the ramp. They did the kick and they couldn't do the ramp. Look at this. Oh, oh, that's gonna hurt. On board, you can see the carnage in course. Well, divine intervention means they will make it down. Moving to South America for number four in the countdown and the spectacular Cerro San Cristobal Hill overlooking the Chilean capital, Santiago. So firefighting racing come next. If you like your dad dancing, this might be the team for you. 45 out of 50 for creativity. A lot of thoughts gone into it. All firefighters. Oh, and it's the good. It's got score. score. 50 out of 50. I'm a little bit surprised wow. they, they got that. I can dance like that too, but I don't think I'd get 50 out of 50. But there we go. Um, I presume the person that's just pushed would be classed as the fire starter, but more on that. If off they go anyway. Wide wheels at the front, narrow at the back, small wheels around the back. <laughs> They've going over the top. Oh, look at that! He's got the soapbox on him. Well, they nearly went completely out of the berm. They forgot a really vital ingredient. You've got to turn right. He's just gone up and up and up, and he nearly went over. Look at that! It was only Whoa. one wheel left on the berm. So what do they do now? Okay, that's for today. 